Good afternoon to you. This is Mr. Kennedy. I'm the history instructor for your world history class at the Douglas campus. I apologize that we were not able to meet today. Uh, there are some things happening that were beyond our control and we are going to be online for this week and next week, uh, at least for now. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, this video is just going to tell you kind of what we were going to do today in class if we had met. I'm going to go over what happens if you get COVID-19, uh, who you notify if you suspect you have COVID-19, and then I'm also going to go over our syllabus and our, our Blackboard shell today. So let me click on that so I can open up our Blackboard class. This is what Blackboard looks like. Hopefully you've gotten a chance to see this. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see all of our different options, home page, announcements, student center. Uh, you can read all of that. There are a few things that you won't see. I'm going to turn edit mode off. This is more like what yours will look like. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on syllabus. I think it's really important that you have an idea of what you're getting into. Um, all right, when the syllabus loads, You'll see here, it's History 1111, World History 1. Uh, we're going to meet on Thursdays from 2 o'clock to 3.15 in room 161 at Douglas. It's a pretty large lecture hall that will let us be apart from each other, uh, far enough apart that we can actually be in the same room. Uh, my email address is jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. My office is in Carrollton on the Carroll campus. If you're ever in Carrollton, you're welcome to stop by. And my phone number for my office is on the syllabus as well. Truthfully, email is a little bit better just because I'm not always in my office because I have to teach at Carrollton, Douglasville, and the Murphy campus as well. My office hours are available there. I'm going to have virtual hours on Tuesdays uh, from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock. I know it doesn't say Tuesday there. I'm going to correct that. But uh, it's upswing tutoring. It's available on Blackboard and I'll be there from 12 to 5 on Tuesdays. Textbook for this class is completely free and on the syllabus here uh, this says World History, Culture, States, and Societies to 1500. If I click on this it will open up our textbook. Now it does take a second because it's a pretty big file and my internet isn't great today. Um, it's being a little slow. But here you go, you can see World History, Culture, States, and Societies to 1500. And it's an actual textbook, completely free to you, not going to make you buy a thing. Okay, scrolling down, the uh, next section I want you to pay attention to is course attendance and makeup requirements. You are graded for being in class. It's 5% of your grade. Um, also, if you are there every single day, then I'm going to give you extra credit for being there every day. Um, now there's one, there's one um, thing that's different this semester, and that's with COVID-19. If you suspect you have COVID-19 and you need to miss class, or if you are showing symptoms of COVID-19 and you need to miss class, or maybe you're waiting for a test, if you don't come to class because of COVID-19, it's excused. You just need to let me know in an email. Hey, I think I have COVID. Hey, I've been near somebody with COVID. Or hey, I'm waiting to be tested for COVID. If you do that, and I know that's why you missed, that will be counted as an excused absence. The next thing I want you to pay attention to is plagiarism. A plagiarism, especially in history, it's important not to do. You have to give credit to other people for ideas or work that isn't yours. So it says plagiarism is a serious offense. The penalty in this course for plagiarism or any other infraction of academic integrity will be a grade of zero on that assignment. Incidences of plagiarism will also be reported to the college for disciplinary action. Most students don't intend to plagiarize, but it is your responsibility to make sure it doesn't happen. All work for this course must be original to this course. Coursework from prior semesters or courses may not be reused. Let me just simplify that. Do all your own work. Your friend's not taking the class, your mom, your dad, they're not taking the class. Uh, Google, if you search for something there, they're not taking the class. Neither is Wikipedia. 
So any work that you do, and I'll say this in person when we finally do get to meet in person, any work you do, no matter how great or how bad you think it might be, will be instantly better than anything you find off the internet. So I can't stress this enough. Please make sure you do your own work. I will reward you for doing your own work. Grading, this is where people usually get a little worried, but I promise it's not bad. There are two tests. There's a midterm exam and a final exam. The midterm is 20%. The final is 20%. It's a total of 40%. There are reflection papers, which are opinion papers. It's really hard to get an opinion wrong because we all have opinions. My favorite color is blue. Your favorite color might be green. It's okay to be different. But there are four reflection papers. Five times four is 20%. Each one is worth 5% individually. A museum review, you will have to look at a virtual museum or you'll have to watch a virtual movie. I leave the choice up to you, but you'll have to do one of the two things and write a short paper on it. Activities is 15% of the grade. And what I mean by activities is just completing the online work because there are some discussions and quizzes you'll have to do. Uh, any classwork we might do, any discussions in class we might do, just showing up and being ready to, to do what you need to do. That's 15% of the grade. That's probably, other than participation, the easiest portion of the class. There is an essay. Everybody taking History 1111 at West Georgia Tech will have to do this same essay. So don't think you can drop my class and take uh, one of the online classes. You'll have to do the essay there too. That's 10%. And then participation, that's another word for attendance. 5% of your grade. All right, exams, uh, they're not cumulative. So the first half of the class is the first half. Second half of the class is the second test. Um, I know it says in here, could be multiple choice, short identification, short essay questions, because we're only meeting one day a week and we've already been messed up for the first two weeks of the course. I'll tell you right now, multiple choice is what it's going to be. So um, don't don't be surprised when we get to the midterm and it's 50 multiple choice questions. That's just what we're going to do. The reflection papers, again, those are opinion papers. There are certain readings that you have to do each week and your reflection paper uh, can be on those readings. Um, what you'll do is you'll read one of these articles or one of these primary source documents that is in Blackboard. I'll show you in a minute. And your first paragraph of your reflection paper would be to quickly summarize what you read. The rest of it, the, re the next page to page and a half, should be your thoughts on what you read, your opinions on what you read, your personal ideas of what you read. That's where you actually get to tell me what you think. You might have absolutely hated a reading, that's okay. Tell me why you hate it. You may have loved a reading, that's great. Tell me why you loved the reading. The most important thing though is that you give me your opinion and you show me why you feel the way you do about that reading. The museum exhibit review, it's about double the length of a reflection paper. There's only one of those you have to do. It's due at the end of the semester. And I have a couple questions that are listed here for you to consider when you're looking at your virtual museum or when you are watching your historical movie. For example, does the museum explain the exhibits adequately? Does the layout of the website make sense? Is there something the website did really well? Is there something that the website maybe needs to improve? If you're choosing a movie, is the movie realistic? And how close does the movie follow events? Um, so those are just some ideas. You're not limited to answering those questions when you do the museum review, but it's something to get you started. Um, now, how do you do the museum review? Well, it's a combination historical review and reflection paper. For the first half of your paper, which would be about a page and a half, give me your opinions. I liked the website. I hated the website. I didn't understand the website. I loved the movie. I hated the movie, whatever it might be. But then the second half of your exhibit review should be answering those questions, thinking like a historian, and critiquing what you saw. Activities, once again, that's just your daily work, coming to class prepared, taking notes, just being a good student. 
and then that essay. You must complete a five to seven page essay that explains the causes of the Protestant Reformation and the effects of the Protestant Reformation and the resulting Catholic uh, Reformation. That sounds like a lot. It sounds like it would be really hard. Oh my god, I have to write a seven page paper. I'm going to die. No, what you'll find out when you start researching this topic is it's a very big topic. It's going to have more information than you know what to do with. And you'll find yourself actually having to leave stuff out. I'm not going to get too far into the SLO essay right now. I just want you to know it exists. We'll talk about it a little bit further because that's not going to be due until November. Participation, 5% of your grade, and then extra credit. You must do one museum review. That's required. A second museum review can be do, done optionally, and that would be extra credit. So if you do a second museum review, if you turn in that second museum review, I will give you two points on your final grade. So in the end of November or the beginning of December, if you find yourself with a 78 and you really, really, really need that B, don't beg for the grade. Just do the extra credit and you'll get those two points, I promise. Now the last thing on the syllabus to show you is the course schedule. And here you can see each week I have it laid out. Today's the 13th. It's the introduction. Normally I'd be doing this in person today, but obviously I can't. Um, so between now and next Thursday, you'll need to post your introduction and complete the course agreement. All work is due Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. I give you one full week to do your work. Uh, the work will open Thursday morning, 12 a.m. It will close 11.59 p.m. Wednesday night. Now, specific due dates for the bigger projects or the bigger assignments, I put those in bold. For example, you can see reflection paper number one, that's week three. That'll be due on the 2nd of September. Reflection paper number two is due on the 30th of September. Our midterm exam is the week of October 8th. That's going to be online. I'm not going to make you come to class for that. And so on and so on. And the last thing uh, you'll want to pay attention to, the final exam and the museum review are both due the very last day of class, which is December 3rd. Clicking on syllabus again, you'll see this COVID-19 syllabus addendum. I'm going to click on that for you too so you can see it. Uh, this is just a statement about COVID-19. And when we finally meet each other in person for the first time, you're going to have to sign a form that, that says you agree to all this. Um, I'll leave this to you to read on your own because I don't want to make this video too long. But let me just kind of tell you the highlights. Stay home if you're feeling sick. The reason I'm having to do this by video is because somebody came to class this week and they were sick. So stay home if you're sick. Make sure you read the COVID-19 symptoms. And if you're having any of those symptoms, please stay home. Social distance. Keep your face mask on at all times. Make sure you wash your hands. Don't cough on people. Don't sneeze on people. Notify me as your instructor if you test positive for COVID-19 or if you have been exposed to COVID-19. An absence due to COVID-19 will be forgiven, so please don't feel pressured to come to class. I'll work with you, I promise. Um, there's also this COVID notification steps. This is on the West Georgia Tech email, or not email, but website. And I'll give you a copy of this in person when we meet in two weeks. If you have a confirmed test, if you suspect you've been exposed, or if you're experiencing uh, symptoms, not only do you need to respond to me and let me know, hey, I'm not going to come to class, but there's a special COVID response team that must know. Because this COVID response team, uh, you can email them at covid at westgatech.edu. They're going to contact trace they're going to find out who and where you've been uh, they're going to make decisions on whether classes need to be canceled moved online everything so it is so 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 important that you let people know when you're sick don't come to class when you're sick 
and make sure that you give the COVID response team an email when appropriate. You can also see our course lesson plan right here. This is the exact same thing that's on the end of the syllabus. So I've got a couple different places where you can do it and see it. Right. Yeah. Well, let me see here. Let me go to turn on edit mode again so you can actually see the lessons. Alright, so this is the lesson section of the the Blackboard page. The very first thing you're going to see, it says World History, Cultures, States, and Societies to 1500. That's just a secondary way to get to the textbook. So you can get to the textbook either through the syllabus or through the lessons folder here. Uh, the Chicago style citation, you can ignore that for right now. I will go over that in person. Uh, these reflection paper drop boxes, that's where your reflection papers will be turned in. And I have it set so that you only see one box at a time. That's to keep you from that's to keep you from submitting it to the wrong box. I'm trying to make it easy for you. Uh, the museum review drop box, this is where you'll turn in your museum review. Uh, the cool thing about your museum review is you can turn it in at any time. Since we're not going to be meeting next week, if you wanted to spend from 2 to 3.15 next week uh, looking at a virtual museum, you can do that. Or if you want to watch one of these films, you can do that. Um, you, and you could turn it in next week if you want to. The only catch is you have to have one of these done by the end of the semester. Now you can see I have an approved virtual museum list. I have an approved historical film list. You can choose anything from this list. Uh, the one thing I want you to know though is for the movies, that's not actually a link to the movie. It's a link to the um, trailer. So you can watch the trailer and decide if you want to watch that movie or not. I don't want you to spend three hours or two hours uh, watching a movie that you hate. So uh, there's that for an option. The SLO Dropbox will eventually be turned in right here, but we're not going to worry about that today because that's for the a little bit further in the semester. And then you have the different lesson folders. So I'm just going to show you lesson one. And I'll turn off edit mode so you can see. Right now, for lesson one, the only thing that's going to be open is student introductions. If you remember, week one, introduction, post your introduction. This is where your introduction is, lesson one, student introductions. So that and the course agreement form are the only two things I need you to do between now and next Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. Now let me turn edit mode back on so you can see everything. Uh, study guide, that just tells you what pages of the book you need to read uh, and some of the terms that you'll be learning. PowerPoint and lecture, anytime we go online I will post a PowerPoint and a lecture into that folder. Also I have a friend who teaches at East Georgia College. She has given me some materials and I have put her PowerPoint and lectures in there as well. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use her information but I think more information is better than not having enough. These online readings, these are the readings where you would get the information for your reflection papers. This is also where you get the information to answer your weekly discussion questions. So not this week, but for next week, you will have three readings you have to do. New Women of the Ice Age, Introduction to Prehistoric Art, and a Brief Look at Neanderthals. Now don't worry, in the next week's video I will remind you of all this, so if this week you forget about it, it's okay. They're, these readings are not due this week, the readings are due next week. But the online readings are where you answer your discussion questions. The videos folder, there's always a couple videos in here for this first week. There are two videos, or for this first lesson, I should say, there are two videos. And you watch those videos so that you can answer the quiz. 
So the discussion questions are linked to the online readings. The reflection paper is based on one of those online readings. The quiz is based on the videos. Week two looks exactly the same. Study guide, PowerPoint, online reading, video. Quiz two, which is linked to the video. Discussion two, which is linked to the online readings. All right, um, I don't want to take too much more of your time because I know when these videos get too long, people don't really want to watch them. Um, I'm sorry, once again, we cannot meet in person. This is the best I can do for us right now. Um, my hope is in two weeks, we will be able to get together. Um, next Thursday, I will put our first lecture and I will put our first PowerPoint online for you to look at. And one last thing, when you watch this all the way to the end, please email me in Blackboard. Send me a Blackboard message saying, Mr. Kennedy, I watched this video. And if you do that for me, I will give you a 100 on a quiz grade. So all you have to do is make it to minute 22 of this video. Send me an email saying, Mr. Kennedy, I watched the video and you get a free 100. So um, thank you for being flexible. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and we'll get through this semester one way or the other, whether it's in person, online, or some mix of the two. So thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon.